Today we're going to review uh, what we should know about acids and bases. So acids and bases are characterized by their particular chemical properties. Acids are what we call proton donors. This means that when it is dissolved in water, it releases hydrogen ions into solution. So there are more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions in the solution. And we call such a solution an acidic solution. Um, bases are proton acceptors. This means that when it's dissolved in water, it soaks up the hydrogen ions so that there are more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions in solution. And then we, we call this sort of solution an alkaline solution or a basic solution. We often uh, talk about acids and bases in terms of the pH scale. pH stands for the potential or power of hydrogen, meaning it's a measure of how many hydrogen ions are present in solution. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. Substances with a pH below 7 are called acidic, while those with a pH above 7 are called alkaline. If the hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions are balanced, the sub substance will have a pH of 7, and we call this a neutral substance. Some substances that have a pH below 7 and are therefore are classified as acids include batteries. Um, hydrochloric acid has a pH around 1. Lemon juice and soft drinks around 2 to 3 pH. Wine uh, has a pH around 4. Coffee and tea have a pH around 5. Rain has a, a pH around 6. Milk around 6.5 and pure water, um, which is what we call a neutral substance, has a pH around 7. Substances with a pH above 7, and therefore classified as bases, include your blood, which has a pH around 8, uh, and most of our cleaning products, such as bleach, has a pH around 12. Um, substances that we use in the lab that are classified as basic include sodium hydroxide, which has a pH around 14. Properties of acids include, as we've already said, it has a pH below 7. They actually have a sour taste, like lemon. Um, they react with metals to form hydrogen gas. These are neutralized by bases. Neutralized means um, to be made neutral, so to bring the pH back to a, a 7 or around 7, we need to add a base to the acid. And they can also conduct electricity in solution, and that's because of the ions that are there. Properties of bases include that they have a pH above 7. They are bitter to taste. Um, they're slippery to touch, so if you get a base on your fingers, you'll feel, they'll feel a bit slippery. They, these are neutralized by acid, so in the same way you can neutralize an acid by adding a base, you can neutralize a base by adding acid. And these also conduct electricity in solution. Um, because of the ions. There's also ions in solution there. Now, both acids and bases are considered to be corrosive, and therefore they need to be handled with care in the lab. Indicators are what can be used to identify substances as being acidic or basic. Examples of indicators include um, blue and red litmus paper, universal indicator, bromothamol blue, phenolphthalein, methyl orange. Um, and these indicators can be produced from natural sources such as flowers um, or red cabbage are examples of natural indicators. Um, but it's important to know that indicators, they don't give a specific measure of pH, um, although universal indicator does give an approximate range. Um, but they do, um, they're just for identifying whether a substance is basic or acidic. Some common equations involving acids and bases include the following. Um, so if you were to put an acid and a base together, this is your neutralization reaction, you'll end up with salt and water. If you have a metal hydroxide and an acid, you will end up with salt and water also. If you have a metal oxide and acid, you will end up with salt and water as well. And an acid and a metal carbonate will give you salt, water and carbon dioxide gas. And these are, um, yeah, these are our common equations that you would have learned in um, stage five science. Hopefully this has helped you refresh your memory of the properties of acids and bases um, so that we can move forward.